Hi, welcome to the next video. Let's continue where we left off. So uh, we are now up to example 5.3. Um, so suppose um, in a region, uh, daily rainfall measured in inches is a continuous random variable. Okay, so it's a continuous random variable. We're not um, rounding it to the nearest integer. With probability density function f of x defined by, given by f of x is equal to 3 fourths uh, 2x minus x squared uh, for 0 less than x less than 2, 0 elsewhere. Okay. So find the probability on a given day. this region, the rainfall is, A, not more than one inch, okay, so let's do each part one at a time. So part A is find the probability in a given day in this region the rainfall is not more than one inch. And so uh, so the probability the rainfall is most one inch is equal to depth intro from zero to one of three fourths two x minus x squared dx. It's just the integral from zero to one of f of x dx. It's zero for any negative x and only non-zero. Uh, from zero to two, but here's from we're doing from zero to one because rainfall is at most one inch. Okay, and so you just calculate this integral. And so let's calculate it. So I'm going to move the three fourths outside of the integral and take an antiderivative of that, which is x squared minus x cubed divided by three. Okay, and uh, I'm going to evaluate that from zero to one. And so if you plug in z zero, you get zero. So this is just the value of one, which is one minus one third. And so 1 minus 1 third is 2 thirds, 2 thirds times 3 fourths is 1 half. And so that's the answer, right? So 2 thirds times 3 fourths of 3 is cancel, you get 2 over 4, which is 1 half. So the probability the rainfall is at most 1 inch is 1 half, or as a decimal, it's 0.5. Okay. Right? So I'm assuming, right, you can calculate integrals, and so you need to be able to use the fundamental theorem of calculus to calculate an integral, definite integral. Okay like this, this integral, um, find the antiderivative of the integrand and evaluate from the lower limit to the upper limit of the integral, okay? Part B. We wanna find the probability that the, uh, find the probability, um, find the probability that the rainfall is greater Rainfall is greater than 1.5 inches. Okay, so we'll find the probability that the rainfall is is more greater than 1.5 inches. So let x be the amount of rainfall. So capital X is going to be the amount of rainfall in inches. And so the quantity depends on the unit of measurement. So this is all in inches. And so the probability of rainfall is greater than 1.5 is probably x, our continuous random variable x is greater than 1.5. Okay. Um, so what's that? It's the integral from 1.5 to 2 of f of x dx, which is 3 fourths, um, 2x minus x squared dx. Okay, so find an antiderivative. I move the 3 fourths out of the integral, take an antiderivative of that. That's x squared minus x cubed 
divided by three, a value rate from 1.52 using the fundamental theorem of calculus. You plug in two, first you multiply by three fourths, right? So then inside, you plug in two, and you get two squared minus two cubed divided by three. That's two squared minus two cubed divided by three, minus the value of that when you plug in 1.5. So 1.5 is three halves. So it's three halves squared minus three halves cubed divided by three. Okay, this is three fourths times uh, two squared by two cubed over three is four minus eight thirds. So that's 12 thirds minus eight thirds. Um, that's four thirds. That's four thirds minus, this is three halves squared, which is nine fourths. Nine fourths minus three halves cubed over three. Um, three halves um, cubed is uh, 27 over eight. 27 over eight divided by three is 27 over 24. Uh, so 9 over 4 minus 27 over um, 24. So this is uh, 9 fourths minus 27 over 24. And so this is um, 9 fourths is the same as 53 over 24. So 53 over 24 minus 27 over 24, that's um, 26 over 24. That's 13 over 12. Okay, and so uh, 4 thirds is 16 twelfths. So you just, you're just calculating this and you get um, 3 twelfths, which is 1 fourth. Um, 3 fourths times 1 fourth is 3 sixteenths. So four minus eight thirds. That's good. Um, and then nine fourths. And so, so this is twenty seven over eight, twenty seven over twenty four. That's nine fourths. That's fifty four. That's why. That's a 54 over 24. So it's 9 fourths. Um, wait. Okay, 9 times 6 is 54. Okay, so that's 54. That's 27 over 24. Oops. So this is 32 over 24. So that one comes in calculating this. So this is 5 over 24. So this is 15 over 96. And as a decimal, that's 0 0.15625. Yeah. It's a little bit more than 0.15. Good. 0 0.15625. Um, no, no, no. Good, that, that's, so the probability is 0.15625, um, C, part C. C, probably the rainfall, so X is the rainfall, so the probability of the rainfall is between 0.5 and 1.5 inches. Okay, so probably the rainfall is between 0.5 and 1.5 inches. So that's that probability. And so that's equal to the definite interval from 0.5 to 1.5 of um, f of x, which is 3 fourths times 2x minus x squared dx. Okay, so when you calculate that, you find an antiderivative. First, you move the 3 fourths out of the integral. And the antiderivative is x squared minus x cubed over 3, the same one we've been using, value from 0.5 to 1.5. So, and that's equal to 3 fourths times um, 1.5 is 3 halves still. So, 3 halves squared minus 3 halves cubed 
divided by three. Um, that minus 0.5, which is one half, one half squared minus one half cubed divided by three. Um, so that's equal to three fourths times um, three halves squared is nine fourths, nine fourths minus 27 over um, 24. Um, So this is 54 over 24 minus 27 over 24. Okay, and that's minus 1 fourth minus 1 over 24. Okay, so that's 1 eighth divided by 3 is 1 over 24. Um, so, you, so you calculate all this out. And so this is, um, this is 5 over 24. This is 27 over 24. So this is 27 over 24 minus um, 5 over 24. That's 22 over 24. That's 11 twelfths. And so you get 11 twelfths times 3 fourths. So it's 11 over 4, 33 over 48. And so that is a decimal it is 0. 0.6875. Okay. Okay, so that's part C. Um, okay, so we're just calculating an integral. We're just translating the probability into a definite integral and then calculating it. Okay, and part D. So the probability of the rainfall is exactly um, one inch. That's the probability that x is 1, and that's 0, right? x is a continuous random variable. And the probability that x is equal to any fixed number is 0. And so part D is 0. Part E is find the probability the rainfall is less than 1 inch. Rainfall is less than 1 inch. That's the probability that x is less than 1. That's equal to f integral from 0 to 1 of f of x, which is 3 fourths. 2x minus x squared dx. And that's equal to 3 fourths times x squared minus x cubed over 3, evaluate from 0 to 1. Um, and that's equal to 3 fourths times, you plug in 1 and you get 1 minus 1 third, which is 2 thirds. You plug in 0 and you get 0. So 1 through 2 thirds minus 0 is 2 thirds. And so that's equal to 1 half or 0.5, which is 0.5 also. Okay, so the probably the rainfall is less than one is one half of 0.5. Let's see. Okay, good. Um, okay, so there's an example of finding probabilities using a continuous random variable. Example 5.5, a third type of random variable. So a third type of random variable. Uh, toss a coin. So let's say you toss a coin, um, if heads, the player drinks um, 10 ounces of beer. If tails, the player um, presses a button. and receives anywhere between between 
zero and a hundred ounces um, of beer. Let x equal the amount of beer received by the player in this game. Um, explain why x is neither discrete nor continuous. Okay, so in this situation, we're going to see that the random variable x here is neither a discrete random variable nor a continuous random variable. And so that alludes to the existence of a third type of random variable because this, ex this explanation is not, ex this situation is not explained um, by a continuous or discrete random variable. Okay, um, so, okay, so first, the first off, uh, first observation one is the set of x values is zero to a hundred inclusive. Um, and, and by that, I mean the reals between zero and 100 inclusive. As that means it's not a discrete set, right? Um, so, that, so that means, that implies that X is not a discrete set. So X is not a finite set, and it's not a set um, that can be put into one-to-one -one correspondence with the positive integers, okay? So if you have a set that's like the reals, you can't put it in one-to-one -one correspondence with the positive integers. So the real numbers from zero to 100, you cannot put in one-to-one -one correspondence with the positive integers, okay? And so that means that X is not a discrete uh, random variable. Okay, so first observation, we conclude then that X is not a discrete random variable. Okay, so the probability of heads, second observation, observation two. The probability of heads, right, in the coin flip is one half. So the probability of and that x is greater than or equal to 10, I mean, sorry. The probability that x is equal to 10, meaning that the player receives exactly 10 ounces of beer, is at least um, one half. Right, so it's at least one half. That's because if it's heads, when the player tosses the coin, when it comes up heads, the player drinks 10 ounces of beer. If it's tails, the player presses a button and receives anywhere between 0 and 100 ounces of beer. Okay, And so whatever probability that if the if the coin lands tails, the player drinks 10 ounces of beer, right? Whatever that probability is, it can only add to the probability of drinking 10 ounces of beer if it's heads, which is one half. So the probability that X is 10 is grand or equal to one half. But for a continuous random variable, the probability that your continuous random variable each equals a fixed number has to be zero. And so here we see the probability that X is equal to some fixed number 10 is not zero. It's grand or equal to one half. And that means it's not equal to zero, right? And so that implies that X is not a continuous random variable. X is not a continuous random variable. And so we, we have deduced that X cannot be a discrete random, random variable and X cannot be a continuous random variable. Okay? And so this alludes to a third type of random variable because the one here is neither discrete nor continuous. And so that's the end of section 5.4. Okay, uh, so let's continue. Okay, 5.5. Um, it's a cumulative distribution function, CDF, cumulative distribution functions. 
um, uh, continuous of a continuous random variable. So, a uh, cumulative distribution function of a continuous random variable. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, so, um, okay, so we'll start with okay. definition um, 5.2. Uh, let x be um, a continuous random variable with a uh, probability density function. integral from negative infinity to x of f of t v t and that's for negative infinity less than x less than infinity and so that is the cumulative uh, distribution function cdf Suppose the temperature of a fluid is never less than 50, is never less than um, 50 degrees Fahrenheit, nor more than 51 degrees Fahrenheit, nor more than 51 degrees Fahrenheit. Also, if X is the temperature of the fluid, above 50 degrees Fahrenheit, the CDF of X is capital F of X is equal to zero for x negative, little x for 0 less than equal to x less than 1, and 1 for x greater than equal to 1. Okay, um, so if that's the case, uh, then we're going to find these following properties. Okay, so here's the Right, this was the definition of the cumulative distribution function, right? And so it's just the integral from negative infinity to x of probability density function. Okay, so now we're going to do this example. Okay, so if that's the cumulative distribution function of x, find the probability x is less than or equal to negative 1, the probability x is less than or equal to 0.5, probably x is greater than 0.2, and the probability that 0.2 is less than x less than or equal to 0.5. Okay, so find those. Okay, probably, probably x is less than or equal to negative 1, capital F of negative 1, is equal to zero. Um, the probability that capital X is less than or equal to 0 0.5 is capital F of 0 0.5 by the definition of cumulative distribution function. And so capital F of 0 0.5, according to that, is 0 0.5. Uh, the probability that X is greater than 0 0.2 is equal to one minus the probability that X is less than or equal to 0 0.2. That's equal to one minus F, capital F of 0 0.2, right? 
this probability is capital F of 0 0.2, which is 0 0.2. So this is 1 minus 0 0.2, which is 0 0.8. And the probability that 0.2 is less than x, less than or equal to 0.5, is equal to uh, the probability that x is less than or equal to 0.5 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to 0.2. Right, so the probability x is greater than 0.2 and less than or equal to 0.5 is the probability that x is at most 0.5 minus the probability that x is at most 0.2. And so that's equal to capital F of 0.5 minus capital F of 0.2. And that's equal to 0.5 minus 0.2. That's equal to 0.3. So that's the probability of that. Okay, and so we found this guy, we found this, we found this, and we found that. Okay. And so that's example 5.6. Okay, so let's do another example. Okay, so example 5.7. Let capital X be a continuous random variable. With probability density function f of x is equal to 1 for 0 less than x less than 1. 0 elsewhere. Okay, find the CDF. Find the cumulative distribution function of capital X. Uh, sketch the graph of capital F of X. Okay. So the goal is to find the CDF of X first. Then we're going to sketch the graph after. So let's find the solution. Okay, so first off, um, capital F of X is equal to zero if little x is less than or equal to zero, right? Uh, the probability density function of little f of X is zero up to X equals zero, up to including X equals zero. It's only non-zero when we get go greater than zero, the little x is greater than zero. So capital F of x is equal to zero if little x is less or equal to zero. Now, if little x is, is strictly between zero and one, then capital F of x is equal to the probability that capital x is less or equal to little x, which is equal to the definite throw from negative infinity to x of f of t dt. Um, and that's equal to, well, up to zero, f, the integrand is zero. So this is the integral from zero to little x of f of t dt, which is equal to the integral from zero to little x of one dt. And so that's equal to t evaluated from zero to x, which is x, little x, minus zero, which is little x. And so that implies that capital F, and this is if, this is if zero is less than x, less than one. Okay, if little x is between 0 and 1, capital F of x is that. And so that implies F, capital F of little x is equal to little x if 0 is less than x, less than 1. Okay, and capital F of x is equal to 1 if little x is greater or equal to 1. Okay, once little x is at least 1, um, you've now added up all the non-zero, uh, you've gotten the whole probability point. Okay. And so find the CDF of X, capital F of X is equal to um, zero if little x is less than or equal to zero, little x if zero is less than x less than one, and one if little x is greater or equal to one. That's the CDF of capital X. 
Okay, so that's the CDF of, of capital X. And the next thing is to do is to sketch the graph. That graph. Okay, so. Okay, so capital F of X is zero, if little x is less than x is zero. Okay. Um, capital F of X is little x if zero is less than x less than one. Okay. And capital F of X is one if little x is greater or equal to one. So that's the graph of Y equals capital F of X. Sketch the graph of capital F of X. There's the graph. Okay, so that's capital F of X. Okay, good. Okay, so that there we found the CDF of F of X and we graph capital F of X. So that's the answers in except for example 5.7. And so that's the end of 5.5. 5. Okay, so let's keep going. of probability of probability density and cumulative distribution functions and CDFs. Okay, so properties of probability density functions and CDFs. Um, so let capital X be a continuous random variable with probability density function at little f of x and, and CDF capital F of x. The following are consequences of the definitions, and specifically in the book, the definitions of 5.1 to 5.2. Okay. Okay, and so definition 5.1 is the definition of a continuous random variable. So that's the definition of a continuous random variable, and 5.2 is the definition of a cumulative distribution function, CDF. Okay? So, as consequences of the definition of a continuous random variable and the CDF for continuous random variable, um, we get the following consequences. One, the integral from negative infinity of f of x dx is equal to one. And little f of x is greater than or equal to zero. wherever for all t such that f of t is continuous. Okay? Two, uh, the limit as x approaches infinity, x approaches negative infinity of capital F of x is zero. The limit as x approaches positive infinity of capital F of X is one. And capital F of A is less than or equal to capital F of B when A is less than or equal to B. Okay? So, okay, and so to point out something about this, um, capital F is an increasing function, right? And so when A is less than or equal to B, capital F of A is less than or equal to capital F of B. Three. Uh, capital F of X is continuous. 
So capital F of x is continuous at all points x, where negative infinity is less than x, less than infinity, that's all real numbers, little x. Four, d capital F of x dx exists and is continuous at all points x such that f of x is continuous. Okay. Little f of x is equal d capital F of x dx at all points little x such that d capital F of x dx exists and little f of x is continuous. Okay, so that's fact five. Uh, so I'll stop for a moment. There's one more to put down. And uh, let's just go, let's look at the third one now. Capital F of x is continuous at all points little x. Okay. D, capital F of x dx exists. The derivative of capital F exists and is continuous at all points little x such that little f of x is continuous. So wherever little f of x is continuous, the derivative function exists and is also continuous. And five, little f of x is the derivative of capital F of x with respect to x. At all, at all points little x such that the derivative exists and little f is continuous. Okay, and six, the PDF, the probability density function, the PDF of a continuous random variable need not be unique. Okay? So the PDF of a continuous random variable need not be unique. Right? Okay. Um, and, and so... Um, Right, and so we're we're finding our probabilities using capital F, right? Um, and so if we were to change the value of the PDF at one point, it would not affect the probability in an interval, right? So the probability at any one point doesn't matter. So if we took only one point of x, and we changed its value from whatever it was to like a million, it would have no effect on the probabilities of anything. It's a, it's a range of values of a continuous random variable that affects the overall probability. Okay. And so, and so the PDF of a continuous random variable does not have to, is not unique, okay? So this is infinitely many to choose, okay? Um, okay, and so something to point out, property one, that, prob that property um, could be the definition, can be the definition of a probability density function, okay? So this can define, um, Uh, a probability density function, a PDF of capital X. Okay, and six, and by property six, we just point out when you talk about a PDF, you would say um, a PDF, not the PDF, because it's since the P, since a PDF or a function is not unique. When you refer to the P, of a PDF, uh, when you're thinking of a PDF, you say a PDF, not the PDF, because the would imply that there's only one. Okay. Um, okay. So anyway, so these are six consequences of the definition of a continuous random variable and a cumulative distribution function. Okay. Okay, and so um, that's that. Okay, so let's keep going.
So example 5.8, let capital X be a continuous random variable with cumulative, with cumulative distribution function CDF given uh, by capital of X uh, capital of X is zero if little x is less than or equal to zero um, one fourth x squared um, if zero is less than x less than two and it's one for if little x very equal to two okay so let capital x be a continuous random variable with the cumulative distribution function capital f of x and so now the problem will be find um, the probability density function of f the pdf of capital x okay that's the goal So the solution is by applying property five in that last list, which hopefully copy down, copy down by applying property five, we get. And so property five tells you that little f of x is the derivative of capital F of x. Okay. So property five tells us that the little f of x is equal to ddx of capital F of x. So by applying that property, we get little f of x is equal to d capital F of x dx. That's equal to the derivative of that thing. And so the derivative of that is just um, one half. The derivative of one fourth x squared is one half x. So that's one half x. Uh, for this range of values, 0, less than x, less than 2. And everywhere else, the derivative of 0 is 0, and the derivative of 1 is 0, and so it's 0 elsewhere. Okay, so finding the PDF of x, it's there. That's what it is. That's the PDF. It's equal to that. It's a piecewise function. Okay. You just take the derivative of that function, and it's the left of x. By property 5 in the, the six properties on the last portion. And so we found the PDF of x. Okay. Okay, so that's example 5.8. Okay, so let's keep going. Seven, several important continuous distributions. Okay, so five point seven, several important continuous distributions. Um, and so five point seven point one is on one of them, which is called the continuous. Uniform distribution. Okay, five point seven point one is on the continuous uniform distribution. Um, so, if a continuous random variable. Um, has the following PDF, then it is named, it is called a, um, a continuous uniform random variable. Okay, so if a continuous random variable has the following PDF, then it is called a continuous uniform random variable. And here's the PDF definition um, 5.3. And so let alpha and beta be constants with alpha less than beta. Uh, 
function f of x is equal to 1 over theta minus alpha over alpha plus an x plus theta, zero elsewhere. So that f of x is the uniform probability density function. Okay, so definition 5.3, let alpha and beta be constants with alpha less than beta. That function is the uniform probability density function. Yeah, and so if a continuous random variable has that as a PDF, it's called a continuous uniform random variable. Okay. If a continuous random variable, that's PDF, then it's called a continuous, if you add the word uniform, continuous uniform random variable. Okay, so pause so you can look at the definition. That's the PDF. So we're going to talk about two characteristics of this PDF, and then we're going to do an example. Okay, so you see the left endpoint, the alpha is the left endpoint of this interval, beta is the right endpoint of the interval. Beta minus alpha is the length of that interval, and it's 1 over the length of that interval, beta minus alpha. Okay, and that's the probability when x is between alpha and beta, and 0 elsewhere. Okay, so now two characteristics for that PDF, uni continuous uniform uh, probability, de uh, probability density function. Uniform probability density function. Okay, um, so two characteristics are one of the uh, continuous uniform random variable x, one of the possible values. of the random variable um, are restricted to some interval alpha comma beta of real numbers. Okay, and two, so these are the characteristics of a um, continuous uniform random variable x. If I1 I2 are subintervals of beta length okay uh, the probability x takes probability uh, x takes probability x takes uh, either uh, values in either uh, the same okay so the characteristics of a continuous uniform random variable x one the possible values of the random variable are restricted to some interval alpha beta of reals and if I1, I2 are subintervals of that interval of equal length, the probability x takes on values in either are the same. Okay, and so those are two characteristics. So for instance, um, if you have the interval of alpha beta um, of reals, and let's say you, uh, right, so these are the only possible values. So if you look at a real number outside of that interval, right, uh, the, the, um, the random variable only has values in that interval. Also, 
right? If you look at an interval of equal length, this interval and this interval, let's say they have the same length, and so this is I1 and I2, then the probability that X takes on value here is the same as the probability X takes on value there. Okay. So it just depends on the length of the subinterval of alpha comma beta, uh, the probability of X occurring there. And you can move the interval as long as you keep the length the same, the probability doesn't change that X takes on a value there. Okay, so those are two characteristics of that. Okay. okay so next. Example 5.10. Um, okay, so a zero. So syrup is 99% pure maple. Um, um, by the label. Okay. Um, if uh, the percentage of pure maple syrup in any bottle is a uniform random variable x with values ranging from 98.5 to 99.5. What is the probability what is the probability uh, the bottle of this brand has um, a less than 99% pure maple syrup? So I'm done writing on that. Um, example 5.10. A syrup is 99% pure maple by label. If the percent of pure maple syrup in any bottle is a uniform random variable X with values ranging from 98.5 to 99.5, what is the probability the bottle has A, less than 99% pure maple syrup? The probability of X, um, which is the percent, right? X, the percent of pure maple syrup in any bottle is a uniform random variable X. So that's what X is, a percent. And so finding, you want to find the probability that the bottle has less than 99% pure maple syrup. So it's the probability that X, which is the percent of pure maple syrup, is less than 99. Right? We want to find the probability X is less than the 99, but X values only range from 98.5 to 99.5. So that's going to equal the, pro the, um, the probability that 98.5 is less than X, um, less than um, or equal to 99. So we can add the inequality there, the equal sign there. It doesn't change the probability. Okay, so that's equal to the probability that X is at most 99. Um, oh, yeah, wait, sorry, this is a uniform uh, random variable. And so I'm just going to include the equal sign in. So x is somewhere between 2. Let me just keep it like this. Okay, x is strictly between 98.5 and 99.5. It has to be at least 98.5, and it has to be less than 99. And so then, according to, because it's a uniform um, random variable x, it's 1 over 
99 minus 98.5. And so that's 1 over 0.5, and that's equal to 2. Oh, okay, sorry. This is a continuous variable. Okay, so so then it's continuous. So um, that means it's definite integral from ninety-eight point five to ninety-nine of um, of little f of x dx. Okay, and so if we have little f of x, that's equal to um, so. It ranges from 98.5 to um, 99.5, right? So if x is between that and that, pull up x is 1, and it's 0 elsewhere. Because those are the only range of x values, okay? And so then that means that this is equal to the definite integral from 98.5 to 99 of 1 dx. And so um, that's equal to x evaluated from 98.5 to 99. That's equal to 99 minus 98.5, which is 0.5, and that's it. Okay, so the problem that x is less than 99 is 0.5. Okay, so I just wrote the PDF here. It's a uniform random variable with that PDF. It's a continuous uniform random variable. Okay, so it's part A, so let's continue to part B. Okay, did part B, and that brings the PDF. Okay, so part B, uh, what is the probability that more than 99 percent um, that there's more than 99.4 percent pure maple syrup um, in the bottle right so I'm going to write the PDF again here the PDF little f of x is equal to 1 if 98.5 is less than x less than 99.5 um, and it's 0 elsewhere Okay, and so the probability that more than 99.4% maple syrup, pure maple syrup, um, well, so that's the probability that capital X, which is the percent, is greater than 99.4. And that's equal to a definite integral from 99.4 to 99.5 of f of x dx, and so that's one. Step integral from 99.4 to 99.5 of 1 dx, or that's equal to x evaluated from 99.4 to 99.5, and that's equal to 99.5 minus 99.4, that's equal to 0.1. So the probability that x, the percent of pure maple syrup in the bottle, is greater than 99.4, more than 99.4, is 0.1. Okay? Part C, probably that exactly 99%, probably the bottle has not exactly 99% pure maple syrup. 
Well, that's the probability that X, which is the percent of pure maple syrup, is equal to 99. And so we know that the probability that a continuous random variable takes on exactly one value is zero. Right? We're almost certain that won't happen. The probability is zero. Okay, and so part C, the answer is zero. Okay, so that's parts A, B, and C of this problem. Okay. Uh, let's keep going. Okay. Uh. Okay, so next is five point seven point two. the exponential distribution. Okay, the exponential distribution. Okay, so a continuous random variable has an exponential distribution. called an exponential random variable if its PDF is the following. Okay, so a continuous random variable has an exponential distribution and it's called an exponential random variable if its PDF is the following. Uh, so this is definition um, 5.4, the definition of an exponential of uh, the PDF, um, the exponential probability density function. Let theta be positive, be constant. So theta is a positive constant. The function, the function f of x, to 1 over theta e to the negative x over theta for x positive 0 elsewhere. Um, so that function is the exponential probability density function. Okay, so let theta be positive, be constant. The function, the left of x function, is the exponential probability density function with parameter theta. Okay, and so if you have a continuous random variable where this is its PDF, it's an exponential random variable. So we have the PDF for a continuous random variable, and that is called a, an exponential random variable. Um, okay, so let's do an example. Okay, so we're going to use that PDF. Example 5.11, the time interval in minutes between calls arriving is an exponential random variable 
with parameter theta equals 0.5. Find the probability that Okay, so find the probability that. Okay, so in example 5.11, the time interval in minutes between coals arriving is an exponential random variable with parameter theta equals 0.5. And we will find the probability that in A, uh, there will be a weight of at least one minute between the first and second coals. arriving on a given day. Okay, so the solution is we're going to first let x equal the length um, equal the time interval length in minutes. Write the length between Cole's time interval in minutes. Uh, the PDF then, the PDF of x is then little f of x, which is equal to 1 over um, so theta is 0.5, right? And so when you have a uniform and exponential probability density function, f of x is 1 over theta e to the negative um, um, x over theta if x is positive and 0 elsewhere. So that is the PD, that is the exponential, that is the X, uh, the PDF for exponential random variable, right? So the PDF for an exponential random variable is that. And so here theta is 0.5, so we're just going to plug in 0.5 there. So we have 1 over 0.5 uh, times e to the negative x divided by 0.5, and that's if x is positive and 0 elsewhere. Okay? And so that implies that the probability of a weight at least one minute is the, equal to the probability that capital X, which is the length of time you wait, is greater than 1. Okay? So let me point out the time interval, right? The time interval in minutes between coals arriving is an exponential random variable with parameter of theta equals 0.5. So it being an exponential random variable means that its PDF is the exponential random variable PDF. So it looks like this. And so theta is 0.5, that's the parameter, so you just plug in 0.5 again. And so that's your PDF, right? And so we want to find the probability that the wait is at least one minute. So that means x, which is the amount of time you wait, is greater than 1. And so um, that's equal to the integral from 1 to infinity of f of x dx. And that's equal to the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over 0.5 um, e to negative x over 0.5 dx. Equals e to negative 2, which is 0 0.1353. So you compute this integral, and you get e to the negative 2, which is 0.1353. Okay, so you have to be able to compute that indefinite integral. And you do that 
and your A negative two, which is that. Okay, so that's part A of example 5.11. Let's do it for example B. So part B, um, find a probability there is a weight of at least one minute uh, between each of the first five calls on a given day. Okay. Um, right, so the probability from, from part, from A, the probability of capital X, which is the wait time, is greater than one, was equal to 0 0.1353. And so the probability that there's a one minute wait between five calls. Well, if you have five calls, right? You have a call here, the first call, the second call, the third call, the fourth call, and the fifth call. If you get five calls and you want to wait at least, um, so at least, at least one minute wait between five calls, right? That means there's at least one minute wait here, at least one here, at least one here, and one here. But even though there's five calls, you're only waiting four times. It's a lot of times to wait, but um, one, two, three, four. So you're actually waiting four times. And so this is equal to the probability that the wait is longer than a minute raised to the fourth power. Because you want to find, you want that to happen four times. So that's equal to 0.1353 raised to the fourth power. And that's equal to 0 0.00335. Okay? And so that is the answer to B. And we'll stop with that there. I'll see you next time.